Hi, in this lesson, we're going to look at equations that have to do with logarithms or exponentials, primarily logarithms. Um, for reference, I put the five common log laws that we use. First, the inverse. Think of a log as an equivalent exponential or vice versa. The power law, where we can take a power's exponent and write it as a coefficient. Product and quotient rules for breaking up or combining logs. And the change of base rule, if I don't like a base of a log, I can change it to another base. So one of these five or more of these five are going to get us through any given situation that we have. Let's look at the first example. Three exponent, x minus one equals 14. Now, just a mental check. Think about three squared. Three squared is nine. Think about three cubed. Three cubed is 27. So x minus one needs to be somewhere between 2 and 3, or x needs to be somewhere between 3 and 4, just as a reality check here. So, for example, if I put 3 in there, exponent becomes 2, 3 squared is 9, which is less than 14. And if I put 4 in here, I get a number more than 14. So I know I'm looking for a number between 3 and 4. Think of a log, or uh, an exponential as an equivalent log. I'm going to write log with a base of 3. Okay, I'm going to use the argument of 14. And the exponent, x minus 1, is what I equate the log to, because logs give exponents. So I'm going to solve for x. x equals 1 plus <coughs> log base 3 of 14. Now, that's a satisfactory answer, but I could do a couple more things. I can write 1 using a base 3. Log base 3 of 3 is 1. I could also use the power rule, or not power rule, the product rule, and say log plus log with the same base becomes one log of their product. Or I could work from here to the change of base and call it log 42 divide log 3, or I could get a decimal equivalent. Um, maybe just use your calculator and check and see that each of these gives an equivalent Result. Actually, pardon me, you're not going to be able to do that with your calculator for base 3. For most calculators, they don't change base. So we'll just leave it at that. We could get a decimal equivalent, but that's an approximation. Let's move on. Next one. I've got three different logs. They're all base 10. I've got subtraction. I've got a coefficient. So here's one approach. Now, often there's more than one approach. But let me do what's coming to mind here. I'm going to write this as a power. So I'm working the power law backwards. I'm making a coefficient into an exponent. Next, I'm going to recognize that a log minus a log, right here with the same base, can be written as one log of a quotient. So I write that. Now I'm going to use a logical argument to say that if I have a log equal to a log and the bases are the same, then the arguments must be the same. So 4 minus x squared over 3 must equal 10 minus x. OK, at this point, I'm just trying to gather, isolate, and solve for x. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So this is 30 minus 3x. On this, I'm going to expand that. That's 16 minus 8x plus x squared. So this is a quadratic equation. Gather all the terms. x squared minus 5x. Let's bring 30 to this side. That's minus 14, I believe. I'm going to factor this. I'm running out of room here, so I'm just going to write over here. x minus 7, x plus 2 equals 0. So x equals 7 or a negative 2. Now, let me go back because there's something I want to talk about here. When I have an exponential equation, the domain is all reals. So when I get a result for x representing a domain, any value is satisfactory to substitute here. There are no restrictions is what I mean. So this root will automatically be valid root for the equation as long as I didn't make mistakes in my math. However, when I do logs, I've got to think about substituting these values into the argument of the log, remembering that arguments must be positive. If I substitute 7 here, I get the result of 3. I'm allowed to take the log of 3. If I would substitute 7 over here, however, 4 minus 7 is negative. So I actually have to reject that root. It's an extraneous root. It's not valid. It doesn't completely satisfy the, the equation. Let's try a negative 2. Negative 2 here makes the result of 12, which is fine. Negative 2 here makes the result of 6, which is fine. So negative 2 is a valid root. Third example. 
Maybe you try this one now, now that you've seen me do a few. See how you do on this problem by pausing and then rejoin once you've got an answer. All right, here's my solution. These both have log base 10 and I'm adding, so I'm going to write that as a product. 29x minus x squared with one log. Next, I'm going to think of a log as an equivalent exponential. The base on this is 10, the exponent is 2, and it's equal to the argument of the log. Again, I have a quadratic. Let's gather all the terms to one side. I like to gather it to the side where x squared is positive. 10 squared is 100. Let's see if I can factor this. Typically, the questions that you're going to get are going to be factorable. 100 is 25 times 4. I need two negatives. So this is going to be my, my correct set, um, factorization. This leads to roots of 25 or 4 that are apparent. They seem to be the answer. Let's check. 25 substituted here is good. 25 substituted here makes the result of 4, which is also good. Let's try 4. That one's valid. Let's try 4. 4 substituted here for an argument is good. 4 substituted here makes log of 25. Again, that's good. You should actually show the substitution. Okay, I'm just going to make a note of that. Show the substitution as your check. All right. Next example. Ooh, this one looks confusing. x exponent log x equals 100x. Now, there's often more, more than one way to approach this. Again, I'd encourage you to pause right now and try your hand at this problem, see how you do, and then rejoin me. All right, I am going to apply the log to both sides. I'm going to say log base 10 of this expression equals log base 10 of this expression. So equality is maintained because I'm doing the same thing on the left and right side. The left side is a type of power. There's a base and there's an exponent. So I'm going to bring the exponent out front. Log x exponent. The remainder is log argument x. So it's log x times log x. Over here, I recognize that I'm multiplying and 100 can be evaluated with log base 10. So I'm going to use the product rule to rewrite this as log 100 plus log x. Now, this can be written as log x squared. I'm going to bring this to this side and log 100 is 2. <clears throat> Pardon me, so I'm going to write minus 2 equals 0. Now, this might look a bit confusing to you, but it's actually a quadratic equation in log. If I make this substitution, a equals log x, observe that I get a squared minus a minus 2, which is a nice, tidy trinomial that is factorable. And it factors into a minus 2, a plus 1. Or a equals 2, a equals negative 1. But now let's substitute what a equals. a is actually log x. Log x is 2. Log x is negative 1. I'm not done. I need x. I'm going to think of a logarithm as an equivalent exponential. The base is 10. 10 exponent 2 is x. So x is 100 is 1 root. Here, 10 exponent negative 1 is x. So x equals 1 tenth is a root. Now these are apparent roots. Let's go back and check to see if they're actually going to be valid. I can use any base I want here. So 100 or 1 tenth is fine. They're not 0. No problem with the domain values over here on the right side. I can take the log of anything positive. 100 and 1 tenth are both positive. So these are both valid roots. Okay, those are four examples of equations that involve exponentials or logs that are solved by the use of the log laws. What I encourage you to do is keep your five log laws handy, make sure you're showing clear work, work vertically by replacing what you have with what's more convenient and easier to work for you, and if you follow those rules, don't break any math rules, follow the five log laws, you should be able to work out a variety of situations. Good luck.